Got a slight break in the rain here. It's been raining pretty much all week. I'm right on the edge of that bulge in the Midwest, and uh, it's nice to see the drought is broken. Last year, it's, it's tough. I've done a couple of droughts down here. One year, I think in 2010, there was oh, 100 days over 100, and I said it. it's like Bill Murray's Groundhog Day, but with heat. Every day was the same. Dust, hot, dust, hot. Oh, it was awful. So, uh, but I, I know I moved from Michigan as, years ago, and I know that I can't do endless gray skies. So let me rotate. So in this garden, the sun garden, I planted the three sisters, right? Uh, corn, squash, and uh, beans. And uh, in, in the place of corn, I've also planted sunflowers. So I see a little bit of corn in there. Not much. It, it's not doing real well. I, I might go back through and reseed some more corn. So I've never seen a, a mushroom with inverted gills before. <clears throat> now that's a new kind of mushroom. And that's what it, it looks like once it gets up there a ways. Black. That's, that's how nature says, do not touch if you ask me. I bet you. But if somebody knows those are the get you high mushrooms, just put that down in the clicky clacks or put whatever kind of mushroom that is. I'm going to guess that it's got the word death in it or stalker or angel or something like that. And that tells me, hmm, no, no, don't, don't touch that one. Let me rotate again. And I have not watered this garden, but with a pot every now and then. And, and I see the cattle have left these sunflowers away. That This little Hugo thing that I've got half built, uh, you know, I've just stacked it. It's looking pretty rough, but it did keep the cattle out. That that was the mission statement. It kept Keep the cattle out. Look at this pumpkin here. <clears throat> this pumpkin has taken over. It's doing everything. Uh, my roast finally stopped, stopped blooming. I'm going to guess those are zinnias out there. Or something. I don't know what they are. But I see right there, tucked up underneath everything. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, I bet you there's a bunch of them under there. I'm going to run that <clears throat> runner right over there. That's in like one night. It did all that. Really something. So, so I've seen people say, oh, their squashes are planted too close together. But... I mean, I threw a pumpkin down, and these are the resultants. So crowded, crowded. Maybe that's the way they like it, and then they spread out from being crowded. Lots of tomatoes growing, but not a single one of them turning ripe. I still pick them every now and then and cut them up and eat them green. Fried green tomatoes. This is some kind of, probably a weed. But it's a sunflower of sorts. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. So we'll find out what that is. And I got uh, something else growing in these pots and weeds. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I think that this is uh, lemon mint grass. Now underneath there, I, I'm going to have to cut this back. I've got a rosemary that I don't want it to kill. Lupines maybe? I'm going to guess that's a lupine of some sort. Man, this is just taking over. But listen, the bees like it. I know it's native. But it's taken over my garden, and I want to have some garden left. What else do I got? My little apple tree, she's doing well. My peach tree gave up the ghost, though. It's it's dead. And what else do I, I got? A pear tree, an apple and a pear tree. Both of them made it. I uh, bought new pecans. We'll walk over and check out the new new trees I planted last night. Let me see. I just plant everything everywhere. I'm gonna I've got a little thing of 12 herbs and I'm gonna go out and scratch some soil here at the end of all this rain and put those 12 herbs in there. Oh, there's another pumpkin right up on the top. See it? Right up in there. Not messing around. I can just keep the squash beetles away. We'll find out. <clears throat> we'll find out. I'm letting it. Let it go native. I thought these might be oregano or something, but they're, they're some kind of a, a native. Yeah. I did plant some, some herbs and spices in there, but I don't see anything but native. What is this here? This is different. 
Let's see what that is. Doesn't have a scent. Got a few onions, not a lot. I'd have liked to have a lot more onions than that. They say plant onions and the cutworms won't get them. Mike, those cutworms were in the onions. Oh, I was disappointed in that. Alrighty, let me put you on pause and go walk over to the to the frog pond that I dug. It's about three foot deep, no berm. We'll look at the trees I planted yesterday. Hank, you just gonna stand there, buddy, and smell all day? What happened at the top of your, your who gave you a mohawk? <laughs> look, look, everybody, somebody gave Hank a mohawk, and it wasn't me. Well, oh, did I hurt your feelings, your head's down. What is with this? You going, going for the punk rock vibe? Hmm. All right, I'll pet you since I made fun of you. I'll pet you since I made fun of you. I am sorry. Sorry that I made fun of you. But you're covered in mud and you smell really bad. Oh, no. No, no, no. you're not going to rub against me. I don't want any part of that. Any part of that. But I'll scratch the nose. You like that. Oh, it feels so good. The nose feels so good. It feels so good. All right. There we go. My horse has got... <laughs> A little punk rock vibe going on. I didn't do that. I don't know how that happened. He got, you know, maybe he stuck his head under the bob wire and it tangled up in there and ripped a little thing out. I might grow a mohawk. Hank and Steve Mohawk Farming. That would be a good name, actually, for a for a farm. Mohawk Farms. All right. All right. The fig tree seems to be doing pretty good. Now, once he gets established later in the year, I'm going to put a little sandwich bag on there with soil and make this little thing sprout. And then I'll plant that somewhere else on the farm. I'll get a twofer. Two for the price of one. Let's see. Somebody hire? See if any bugs are hanging out underneath the leaves. All righty. That looks pretty good. I do like living in a meadow, but let me tell you, my uh, from the knees down, I am soaking, soaking wet, walking around in flip flops. So hopefully there's no rattlesnake. All right, I planted another little loblolly yesterday. I put him in a little crooked. He's he's a little crooked. He needs a little shove. He needs to shove this way. All right. Well, maybe that straightened him up. Wasn't paying attention when I dropped him in the ground. Or he was in the pot crooked. That's what he was. So I have made a decision over here. I like that so much. I'm going to plant another loblolly on the back side of that. A loblolly in the middle. And another one. And then I'm going to cut out all those cedars. Once the loblollies get up there a little ways. I'll have a little loblolly forest right there. I'm physically right at the end of the Lost Pines of Texas, which is a loblolly forest. The glaciers, they say, brought down all of the seeds from Wisconsin and deposited them with the appropriate soil right through this part of Texas. And of course, our pioneer folks have cut everything out they possibly can. Did you know that there was a crayfish in Texas in the pioneer days that was as big as a lobster? And uh, we ate them all up, made them extinct. Otherwise, Texas would have had some huge crayfish as big as a lobster. Think of how much money they could have made off of that. Now, nope, ate them all up. Rotate. Woo-wee! Now that is what two and a half inches of rain actually five five and eight tenths uh rain since the start of this week will do now these cypress are supposed to survive they're supposed to survive in swamps so he officially has his roots in the water today yesterday he didn't when i planted him though water was back there you know that water's i mean for texas I get it's muddy, but it's it's pretty clear. I can see that it's tannins are building up in there. I am going to get a great big stone and put it over there 
and drill a hole in it and run a fountain and I'll put a bird blind in there sunken in the ground so I could shoot across the water I'm gonna put a, a sand bath for the birds a bird bath for the birds some food around here I'm gonna put some purple martin boxes and whatnots I'm gonna make a regular bird habitat this poor thing's got a uh, either not enough solar for the last few days or uh, it's plugged the filters plugged Hank, you keeping me company or you want me to let you out with the cattle? Let's let him out from the cattle. He does not like walking through deep water, let me tell you. Hear him sigh? <laughs> you know, you've got to walk through this, this water. This is the best I can do, buddy. <clears throat> Listen, I, I've needed to build this up for quite some time. Look, I got water flowing backwards. I could see water flowing from my frog pond to there. Let's try not to drop my, my I'm going to zoom out so y'all could get, oh I can't, it says I can't. Hank is following me as close as he can, scaring the bejeebies out of me. Come on! Guy body checked me because I was on the only dry spot there was. That was rude. Alright, I'll let you out with the cattle. Whew! I need to be out here with my boots instead of flip flop. Let me roll. This is just silly. Just silly. Here we go. Let's play in the water. Yeehaw! Cow crap and everything else in there. Hold on, Hank. This, this fence might be electrified. So I don't really want to get shocked. All right. <clears throat> Let's see if I can hear it snapping. No, 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 no. You're okay, buddy. He has long ago learned to fear the electric fence. All right. Go play. Have a good day. I'll come get you later on. All right. Sometimes I like walking him up here and dropping him off with his buddies. Otherwise, when it rains, he just wants to stand all day long out with me. And uh, that's a pain in the ass, or uh, that's a pain in the backside. All right. Now, you all could not hear that electric fence snapping, but I could. <laughs> My, I'm standing in water. I'm absolutely sopping wet. And i got to open an electric fence. Look at the groundhog. He's, he's had a bad day, I bet. Oh, no, look up there. What is that, Hank, you're standing next to? Is that a groundhog dig? Let's wander up there and take a look. Oh, no, it looks like the farmer lost a bit of hay off the back end of his golf cart there. Four-wheeler. Probably had to do that to entice all the cattle. Let's see if big old Romo's out here, the bull. Yeah, he is scared. Yeah, yeah, he is scared to come out now that he's gotten whooped. No, I do not see him. All right, enjoy the day, Hank. All right, well, that post, that T post I stuck in there, uh, that was the old shoreline before the uh, month of May. It's now, I think it's May 9th. No, May 10th right now, May 10th. We have had... Six inches of rain so far in May. That's a really good amount. Anyway, that stock pond was, it never went dry, but it was way down there, just a little teeny tiny, I'm going to guess 14 foot circle or so. And looky there. Now, where that log is sitting, that's the high point of the stock pond, the highest it's ever been. So, you guys, I can hear you got a lost calf right over there, doesn't know what to do. You're going to make me wander over and rescue it, aren't you? All right. So, oh, I got high ambitions for all of this. So, I think that the bank of this stock pond is a lot higher than it needs to be. So, I'm going to rob out this uh, dirt and build my center drive out of it. Uh, I've been putting down chipped wood, uh, but I don't have enough chipped wood to 
to do all of this, you know, as a thing. So I, I knew I'd be making a road, but I can rob out the first two and a half foot of this stock pond. I'm gonna dig another stock pond next to this deeper and then put a uh, little bridge in between the two or culvert. I'll pump this out, all this water out into there and I'll dig this out a little deeper. I am hoping if I go just a little deeper, uh, I could dig some channel cat holes and do some things in it uh, to maybe get some bass in here. If I uh, do 200 by 200, a couple times over, 600 by by 200, that would give me a three acre pond uh, right there. So uh, maybe I'll shoot for a two or three acre pond in the middle of this field. I'm going to try to preserve this tree right here. Live oak tree. <laughs> I think he's live oak. I don't think I, I can't remember if he loses his leaves or not. I think he does. So the road will come off the top of this, go around that side. There'll be another pond there, but right around there will be a a bridge between the two stock ponds, and they'll go over there. And there's a a stuck little calf. I can even see where it's stuck. You all can't. I'll walk over there and see if I can chew them along. Get them free. See, the little things like that are going to short this fence out. So, eventually, a farmer or I, rancher or I, got to get out here with a weed whacker and weed whack that down. But that little guy right there is stuck. He, too little. Where is he? Right in there, you can't even hardly see him. I'm gonna herd him along there, shoo him out of that little spot, crying out for his mama. I gotta be careful, because if she thinks I'm bullying him too much, she'll come over and stomp me. Well, little guy, you're just, you just went down a little end runway street, and you're stuck in an electric fence, a little trap. Let's get you all fixed up. Let's get you all fixed up. Okay. All right, let's wrangle this little guy. Come on. Come on. I gotta keep my head on a swivel or his mom will come out and stomp me a, good, a new one. Come on. He'll learn it eventually. And he won't be all scared. He'd sit there and bellow all day long and just get work himself up in a froth. His mama sees me and thinks I'm me being mean. She will come down here and come through that bob uh, electric fence like it's not even there. Stomp me. I would like not to be stomped. I'll look behind me. Nope, oh, there, see? Free, free, as free as the wind blows. Ah, oh, I'll lose my copyright. Darn it, I won't make any money off of this video. Did you learn this now? I don't have to do this again, right? All right, very good. Well, eventually, between these three swales, I'm gonna capture all of this water. I'm gonna build a pond, ginormous pond on this end of my property to put water back in the, the ground instead of just let it run off and become a flood hazard. Listen, y'all, I'm out here in flip-flops. This is, these burrs and dewberries, they are scratching the daylights out of me. I'm way out now. That the little cow did it to me. All I was going to do is walk Hank to school, let him out, go play with his buddies, come back in. I'm going to rotate. No, I think this flower is called Widow's Tear. I think that's a very harsh name. Pioneery right there. That's what that is. Oh, look at that beautiful tear, uh, that beautiful flower. Let's call it winter tears. <laughs> Come on, pioneer. Everything had a meaning. If it was a cool place, it always had the word devil in front of it. 
Devil's Peak, Devil's Mount, Devil's River, Devil's Bend. Oh my gosh, some devil, 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 devil. Instead of calling, you know, he could have even borrowed the Native American names. It would have had, the Native Americans would have had like Two Forks River or something. It would have been very logical. All right, rotate. That, see, this another little spillover coming through the, the mesquite. I can hear it down in there into the river. Let me see if I can walk across this without getting swept away. Whoo! Thank goodness. White water rafting right there. Let me see if I step over this bob wire or I get electric shooted. <clears throat> Not much flowing here. I do want to find that. Oh, looks like a hog dig. Looks like a hog dig. Got a little waterfall there in the woods. But that's not flowing, flowing. It's just kind of parked. Now that surprises me. Two and a half rain, inches of rain. I was expecting to see this wet weather creek, for lack of better words, flowing. That all runs down, I don't know, six miles away, seven miles away to a butcher's creek, which I think holds water most of the time. But these, they don't hold water. All right, now let's go look at the last one. Well, that's a little bit of runoff from the property. And I've got a good spot to put that pond. Yeah, that pond, I'm, I'm gonna make it sizable. It, it might only be 200 foot wide, but it's gonna go back a little bit, six, 700 feet, maybe more. I might make it a kidney bean shape little island in it. Everybody puts islands in ponds and the uh, pond guys say that's a terrible idea. Nobody maintains them. They just get overgrown. They're probably right, but people can't resist. They cannot. There we go. Got a little waterfall going on. Not much of anything. I would say not only is uh, that going to help me with erosion, but the farmer did that to encourage the cattle to graze this back lot. My personal feelings is they're going to stay out there in that, that pasture until they get it shorn down, and then they'll come back in here. And then I'll open up the uh, I'll open up my personal house area, and hopefully the cattle come in and. And three days. I don't want them there four. I want them three days. Eat it all up. I let them in just to see if they remembered it, and they did. But uh, it takes them a while. Once they learn a gate, they just like you saw Hank was afraid of that electric gate. They they all learn where a gate is, and they don't want to mess with it. So getting them to go through a gate, it's a little bit of work. All right, rotate. I got a long walk through these meadows and flip-flops and rain and muck to go back I think I'll put this up on Sunday. How about that? A long walkabout. Beautiful bit of property in between all the rain. Sure do got a lot of flowers this year. I am not complaining, everybody. Zero complaints from me. We had a boatload of blue bonnets and Indian paintbrush. These primrose are beginning to run out. If they are primrose, I think they are. Just beautiful. All right, this is Steve, a thousand year homes. Usually every weekend I do something that's fairly, fairly gentle touched. So I think I'll put this out on a Sunday. It'll take a long time for me to upload this in a rainstorm. Let me tell you, that Starlink's okay. Uh, certainly I'm not, beggars can't be choosers out here in the middle of nowhere. It's better than a 5G, I could say that. I want it fast. I want a city fast. I want to be like I'm hooked right to a dark fiber somewhere, buried in the, you know, brrr, pipe that brrr, gazillion miles an hour. But instead, I get two or three upload at a time, and it depends on the rain. Not bad. I'm always connected, mostly, except in big, big storms. 
Anyway, like, subscribe, follow me along. I'm going to call this one restorative agriculture. I'm getting real close on that shipping container, though. I'm going to have a grand opening and everything so that the whole world can celebrate with me. Bye.